It's fall of 2020 and the next-gen battle is in full swing. Both Microsoft and Sony have announced their flagship consoles and the holiday launch window is imminent. Wait, sorry, I gotta restart. I went into no like newscaster there for a bit. <laughs> Let's talk about next-gen consoles. It's fall of 2020 and the battle is in full swing. Both Microsoft and Sony have announced their flagship consoles and the holiday launch window is imminent. And while some key details are missing, like the exact price and release date, each company's launch strategy is clear and Microsoft is making a big bet on what the future of gaming will look like. But before we can dive into all the details of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, we first have to talk about the current generation of consoles. While both Sony and Microsoft have found success with the PS4 and Xbox One, Sony is the clear winner. They've sold more than 100 million PlayStation 4s and released plenty of critically acclaimed exclusive titles like Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2, Uncharted 4, God of War, etc, etc. But Sony has gotten cocky. They decided to skip the last two E3 conventions, distancing themselves from what is arguably the Super Bowl of the video game industry. They claimed they wanted to run their own events on their own schedule, but then they canceled the fan favorite PSX event and didn't announce much. On the other hand, Microsoft had an incredibly tough Xbox One launch by shooting themselves in the foot before the race even started. They focused too much on the Kinect digital rights management and making the Xbox an all-in-one TV box and it backfired on them, badly. And while they have made a decent recovery in the last seven years, they are still at a deficit for compelling exclusives. While we're talking about how bad the Xbox One launch was, let's talk about console launches in general. Historically, new consoles have been all about making a more powerful box that you can sell to consumers as a replacement for their current box. It lets you gain dominance in the market by having the most up-to-date hardware as well as encourage gamers to buy their gaming hardware and accessories all over again. Plus, it locks the consumer into your platform in order to guarantee future purchases and get a cut of third-party game sales. And eventually, the cost of making the console comes down and you start making new hardware sales as well. With few exceptions, that's how console launches have gone for decades. And that's what Sony is doing with the PlayStation 5. The PS5 is a brand new console with a brand new controller and brand new games that only play on the PS5. Their focus is making a clear distinction between the PS5 and the last generation. And their sales pitch is all about exclusive hardware, exclusive features, and exclusive games. And it will work. They've created more than enough goodwill with the success of the PS4 to get boatloads of day one buyers. But Microsoft is doing something completely different. They know they can't stand toe to toe with Sony at least not in a traditional way. They simply don't have enough powerhouse studios or mouth-watering exclusives to compete. But they do have an ace up their sleeve, something that is already celebrated within the industry as an incredible innovation and unbeatable bargain. I'm talking, of course, about Xbox Game Pass. If you're not familiar with it, Game Pass is basically Netflix for video games. You pay $10 a month to get access to over 200 Xbox One games all available to download in full and play as much as you want. There's even Game Pass for PC for $5 a month, or you can get both plus Xbox Live Gold for only $15 a month. It's an incredible value made even sweeter by Microsoft's promise that all first party games will be available on Game Pass on release day. That means you didn't have to pay $60 to play games like The Outer Worlds and Gears of War 5. You only needed Game Pass. What Microsoft has done with Game Pass is turn gamers into subscribers. They no longer have to worry about selling you every $60 game that they release. Instead, they have you on the hook for a regular monthly subscription. There's a reason why software as a service is big right now. It turns irregular sales into steady, dependable revenue. Microsoft doesn't look at the Xbox Series X as a completely different console. Instead, they view it as a technological evolution of the current generation. They aren't pitching it as completely different hardware with exclusive games, but instead as an upgrade. The same games you're playing right now, but better. Microsoft is taking all the work they did with the Xbox One and using it as the foundation for a continuing Xbox ecosystem. The Series X is going to have backwards compatibility going all the way back to the OG Xbox. Greater controller support, allowing you to use any controller you have now on the Series X. And the same great Game Pass service that you've come to love. Why start from scratch with a whole new console when you can carry all those features forward on day one? It's a risky proposition, 
especially in an industry that is all about exclusivity. There are plenty of gamers who don't see the point in buying a Series X when they can keep playing their Xbox One and not miss out. But there's also plenty of consumers out there who like to show off, who don't want to be left behind, who want to know they're getting the best experience possible. And I've got news for you. If you're using an iPhone 11, driving a car that's less than five years old, or rocking an NVIDIA RTX graphics card, then you are that consumer. You've already decided that having the latest and greatest technology is worth the extra money, even if there isn't much of a difference. But here's the craziest part. This big bet of Microsoft, where they are upending the usual next-gen sales pitch and trying to sell an unnecessary upgrade, it's not even that big of a gamble. Because whether you upgrade or not, they're still making money off you. There are more than 10 million Game Pass subscribers, and that number isn't going to diminish just because people aren't buying the Series X. Whether you're playing on an Xbox One, Xbox One S, Xbox One X, or Xbox Series X, they'll still be collecting their monthly subscription fee. Console launch years are always a crazy time, and 2020 is, well, it's a hell of a year. But watching Microsoft and Sony do their billion dollar dance trying to win the upper hand with snazzy live streams and buzzword press releases has been fascinating. And seeing Microsoft take a different strategy than usual has made it even more exciting. I can't wait to see if their Xbox Series X gamble actually pays off. Hi, thanks for watching. You should like, you should comment. You should subscribe. Thanks.